In this video, we're going to cover how to handle simple collisions in Unity. We're going to look at colliders, rigid bodies, and all the various events. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is a very simple beginner video. I'm making this because I've seen a lot of comments by people confused with how to get collisions working. One of the issues I see is a lot of people cannot get their triggers to register. It can be a bit tricky, so let's check it out. So for stars, let's make a new game object. So in here, create an empty one, and let's call this our health potion. And now let's add a component of type box collider 2D. So here you can already see the widget displaying the size of our collider. Now let's also add a sprite renderer. And now for our visual over here, I have a health potion texture and just drag it on there. Okay. And now we can click on this button in order to easily edit the collider and make it just big enough to capture the whole texture. Okay. All right. So here is our simple object. Now let's make another object. So we're going to create an empty game object. This will be our player. And inside we have the component of type Capsule Collider 2D, okay? And then also a visual, so a sprite render. All right, so here it is, the sprite with the Capsule Collider on top. So now that we have these two simple objects, let's see how we can handle collisions. So first of all, on the Health Potion, over here on the Collider Properties, you can see we have a bunch of things we can change. For example, over here, we have a box called is trigger. This makes it so that this object is not physically solid and only triggers an event. This is great, for example, for making the player pick up an item. So we do want the player to be able to get inside of this box. So this is meant to be just a trigger, okay. And for the player, we'll leave it as not a trigger since we want it to be a solid object. Okay, and now in here, I have a simple script with some basic movements, so just add it to the player. And here you can see the script is extremely small, very simple. Here we just have a function that being called on update called handle our movement. And we're testing for inputs and moving our transform. That's it, very simple. And now in order to capture our trigger, we need to add a function. So we're going to add the function on trigger enter 2D. So this is the function that is called whenever this object is involved in a collision with a trigger. So here let's just add a debug.log and say something. All right, so let's test. Okay, here we are, and I can move the player around. All right, makes sense. And now let's check out the log whenever I approach the item, and I go, and nope, we have nothing happening. So this is the part that really confuses some people. They both have their colliders correctly set up, so why is nothing happening? Well, the reason is because the physics system is meant to work with rigid bodies and not just empty colliders. So here in our player, we need to add a rigid body, in this case, rigid body 2D, and here, since we're working on top down, in order to make it not fall down, just set the gravity to zero. However, the item itself does not need a rigid body. In order to get the collisions working, we just need one of the objects in the interaction to have a rigid body. So the item is fine just like this, just a box collider with its trigger set to true, and the player has a capsule collider and a rigid body. Okay, so now let's test this. Okay, here we are, and I can still move, and if I go towards the item, there you go, now we have our triggers correctly working. Awesome. So as you can see, it's very simple to fix this issue with collisions not triggering. All you need to do is make sure that you have at least one rigid body in that physics interaction. So now let's look at some more collisions. All right, so over here, I made a static wall and a bunch of debris. So the wall is meant to be static and we should be able to push the rocks around. So here on the wall, all we have is a simple box collider. And as you can see, it is not a trigger. And on the rocks, they also have a box collider, and in addition to that, they have a rigid body set to dynamic. We have the rigid body since we want the rocks in order to be influenced by the physics system. And over here on the player, here let's set the rigid body from dynamic and put it as kinematic. So this is important and we'll see what this does. And now back in our player code, we should rework our movement code and move it into the fixed update due to physics. Okay, so here we're using the rigid body to the move position function in order to move our player. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, here we are, and I just replaced the player with a nice animated character instead of a simple sprite, but it works exactly the same, so I can still move just like normal. And now over here we have our rocks, and if I move towards them, yep, there you go, as you can see, I can correctly push around the rocks. Alright, so that looks good. However, let's go into the wall, and there you go, the wall does not work, and I can go straight through it. So here we have some weird issues. Now, the problem in this case is because we set our rigid body to be kinematic. So kinematic means that it will not be affected by outside forces. So as I move the rigid body towards the wall, the wall will not be able to block it. But being kinematic, it still affects other objects, so that's why we can still push these rocks around. Now here, if we modify the rigid body body type from kinematic and place it as dynamic, and now we test. Okay, so here we are, and yep, I can still push the rocks. Okay, great. And now on the wall, and yep, there you go. Now the wall does indeed work as a solid object. So if you have issues with your objects not colliding, pay attention to whether or not they are supposed to be kinematic. If you want to learn more about physics interactions, including how layers and bit masks work, then check out the video linked in the description. Now let's look at a bunch more collision events. So here we played around with the onTrigger Enter 2D, which gets called whenever a collider enters another one that is set to being a trigger. Then we also have the private void on collision Enter 2D. This one works the same when it enters, except this works with a collider that is not set to being a trigger. And another difference is the parameter in this function is a collision instead of a collider. So the collision contains a bunch of information on the collision that happened, like all the various contact points, collision velocity, and so on. Then we also have the on collision exit and on trigger exit. So these get called whenever the collision between the two objects ends. And then finally we have the on collision stay and on trigger stay. These are called on every physics update while the collisions are active. So let's add logs on all of them. Okay, let's test. Okay, so here we are moving around. Now let's test. So first let's collide with the wall. And there you go, we have a collision enter, a bunch of collision stays, and finally a collision exit. Then over here we have our health potion, which is set to a trigger. So that one, when you go in, yep, there you go, we have on trigger enter, a bunch of trigger stays, and a trigger exit at the end. And finally over here on the rocks, we can push them around, and there you go, we have a enter, stay, exit, just like that. All right, so here are all of our nice collision events. Okay, now let's apply this to some interesting behavior. Okay, here's my player again. Now let's move towards the wall, and yep, it still works as a simple solid object as it's supposed to, okay. Now over here the rocks, let's push them, and there you go, the rocks are now somehow super heavy and they cause me some nice damage. So the player is now damaged, and over here we have the health potion, and let's use the trigger in order to go in there, capture and consume the health potion. And then all the way in here we have this very nice special circle, and as I go inside, there you go, we activate the very cool awesome shader effect, and if I go out, it gets disabled. So there you go, enabled on enter and disabled on exit. If you want to see how this cool looking shader works, then check the link in the description. So over here we have a very simple scene working with all kinds of physics interactions and collisions. Again, if you have issues with collisions, make sure that at least one of the objects in your collision has a rigid body and check if it should be kinematic or dynamic. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.